Now I want to talk about, you know, I talk about all these mock scrape strategies, but um, as we're getting closer here to the hunting season, you really need to look at your strategies and how they keep you from uh, spooking deer. Do your strategies for habitat, uh, do the lines of movement that you're looking at and creating, do they match with what you're trying to do during hunting season? And ultimately, are they keeping you from spooking deer? Because that is the biggest thing. Um, I'd rather have a bad stand location that didn't spook deer than a great stand location that spooked deer every time it went in and out because that has a ripple effect expanding for two, three, four hundred yards around the stand location where it really keeps you from spooking deer in the future or not. One of the biggest strategies that I can recommend, especially as it relates to within 50 to 100 yards of your stand location, is the removal of scrapes that are not on the line of movement and that do not pull deer in the right direction for you to shoot them with a bow. Um, no different than putting a water hole out you know we have a stand location we're putting right behind us i'll talk about that in a second but be no different if i had a water hole 80 yards away that directed all the traffic over there in the evening and, and it pulled them away from your stand for a bowl that that water wouldn't help the deer it's not doing anything good for the deer it's not hurting them it's just an attraction so it's really pulling deer away from your stand and hurting your stand location it's crazy because people do that all the time on private land they'll put an improvement in an area that they can't hunt but when you're hunting on public land, and I, I say often that people make less mistakes or fewer mistakes on public land because you're just hunting movement. You're hunting attractions, you're hunting this bedding area, this food source, this clear cut, this bench system or funnel in between. But on private land, folks will put a mock scrape or a water hole 100 yards from their stand that they can't hunt. You'd never do that on public land. If there was a great attraction on, on public land, you'd go hunt it and you'd figure out how to hunt it, uh, deer coming on and off there. So. We do the same by cutting down natural scrapes that are around the mock scrapes or natural scrapes that we're trying to enhance that relate to the movement. And one of the big reasons, the first, there's three reasons we're doing this, but the first reason is that it keeps us from bumping deer. And in this case right here, the stand will be right behind me. There's a double red cedar uh, tree right behind me. That's where the stand we're gonna is gonna going to go. We actually are narrowing it down to exactly where in the tree it's going to fit. And so when we come into this stand location here, we're already coming to the stand. We're already putting our hunting pressure in here. But on the way in here, I don't want to have an active scrape on the outside over here that I have to walk by and potentially spook deer because I'm pulling deer over to that location. It's also, if you have a great scrape over this location, 70, 80 yards away, 30 yards away, then I could potentially pull deer out of the cover to that scrape to go feed in the ag land behind us. They ignore this food plot right here. They're just passing through because of that scrape and they're not presenting a bow shot because they're too far off to the side. Now I'll show you this stand right here, this, this scrape right here. Now this, this ne isn't necessarily going to have deer bump because we're walking by this stand because we're walking from the outside. But this cherry tree presents a great licking branch right here and these deer are scraping and if this is in an area I want I don't want to shoot like up here I'm facing this direction I want to shoot to my left mostly I love shoot sitting shooting sitting down so I'm going to take this cherry right here and and just get rid of it I don't want there to be a scrape here in any way hey sorry to interrupt this video but my web class series is finally begun how to design your whitetail property is on my website and there's a link in the description. Please check it out. So that first point is if that scrape is located in the area where it sets me up walking in to actually spook deer, then I don't want that scrape in that location. There's a lot of that, especially when you're walking through woods and you're walking back in the cover. Now, the second point out of these three is I wanna place a high priority on our mock scrape. Give you an example here. This is a direction that we can face the camera and we're not getting any sunlight in here during the middle of the day. South is that way. So we're getting all the shadows going this way. We can safely put this camera here. We're not facing it into the sun. We have our mock scrape in this location. This is where they've been hitting the mock scrape consistently, consistently since we put this in. We have a really good scrape right over here. I do not want this scrape here. You see these large apple tree branches are coming back here. We have some apples in this location already. So major scrape, and you can see there's a trail between the two right here. They're hitting this, sometimes hitting that one. Our stand is only like 
10 yards back there. So I don't want those deer right on this edge, right in front of my stand, where for one, we have to shoot through a bunch of brush to get here, but two, they're not out here at a nice distance, nice bow shot away from the stand so that we can easily shoot them. What's cool about this one over here, a lot of times the deer are coming over here, there's some apple trees, they have to turn and hit the scrape. This scrape complements the flow back and forth on the food plot. We don't want to create a situation where deer are just going straight across. But bottom line is, we want, we have a camera right there. I want all the deer in this plot to visit that scrape. And I want that scrape to be the only one out here. Just because you have more scrapes does not determine that you're going to have more bucks in an area. That was old fallacy that you'd you know, put 200 scrapes on a, on a property. And I've seen up to 500, literally in person, scrapes that people have made, mock scrapes on one parcel and it diminishes the value of all of them. So there's no priority for a buck when they come through a certain area to go hit a certain scrape and not only get their picture taken, but set them up for a shot. So we want a high priority on that scrape by cutting all the scrapes down or potential scrapes on this food plot, then we're going to keep them from focusing elsewhere. We want them to come through here, not only because we want to get a picture of them and inventory every buck that visits this food plot, which we will when we only have this one scrape here, but we also want to set them up for a bow shot when they're coming through, not too close to the stand and not too far away. So it's important to make sure you're not bumping deer by random scrapes in the woods, especially a hardwood setting where you're walking in, you have to walk by scrapes. We want to make sure we're not setting ourselves up that we're placing a high priority on the scrapes that we do want to have and, and make. And then number three, we want these mock scrapes to match the movements of the mature bucks in the area. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want bucks that are coming through here. We want them to come out, turn, hit this, and then go out a side trail out here after they're fed on the plot and go out to the ag fields or go wherever, wherever they're gonna go after dark. We want this food plot to represent that last stop during daylight before they exit out of here and go after dark. So we wanna make sure that these scrapes match the movement. We have this scrape right here. We have a water hole that way with a stand that's more in the timber. It's 50 yards off the end of this. And then we have another small food plot on the other side of that. This is only about a quarter of an acre, maybe only one fifth of an acre. The next one down is about an eighth of an acre. And then we have about a 10th of an acre past that. But it's a series of small food plots where deer can travel from one to the other and feel safe. We have a water hole down that way. We have another mock scrape on the, fur, the far one um, about 300 yards away. So we're trying to reinforce this line of movement here in this scrape is right in that entire line so a buck can come out here and he can turn right or left. He can go to the water hole that way over to that stand depending on which wind we have. And we're gonna hunt these stands based on the wind and based on the access and time that we can get in here. For example, I'm not gonna come in and sit in this small food plot during a morning hunt because anything that's in here, I'm gonna blow out by getting in here in the morning. We might be able to slip in here post daybreak, you know, half hour after. But the least risky spot to hunt in this line right here is that water hole over in the timber that's 40, 50 yards off the end of this plot, that's a 100 yard long plot, and then it's 40, 50 yards off the other plot that's past it. So we can get in there, and bucks will actually hit that water during the middle of the day in that location. Safe morning spot to get into. We're not coming in right on top of food. And so we're making sure our mock scrapes match the line of both existing deer movement, say if you're on public land, and you're working this system, if it's legal in your state to create a mock scrape, and we're matching the line of the movement, strengthening the line, and then certainly we're coming into locations like this where we can take these outside limbs and we're just getting rid of these scrapes and potential scrapes. And you can tell this one's been used for a long time. It's not gonna be used now. So we'll actually throw these back in here so we're blocking the movement by the stand. But I'm gonna take down anything that I feel is an opportunity for bucks to use as a scrape. And you can imagine that by doing that, we're placing a high priority on that mock scrape over there. We're making sure we keep deer away from our stand location, at least in that six, seven yard range where might, we might spook them by moving around. And then we're making sure the deer hit that within their line of movement. 
That's why we cut branches down in locations. That's why we remove these as potential scrape. And we'll continue to do that all the way around this plot because we want every buck that comes into the small food plot to hit that mock scrape for inventory and to set themselves up for an awesome bow shot this fall. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, you're obviously interested in white tail habitat solutions, what I have to teach, and you will love my new web class series. The first one is how to design your white tail property. It's out now. The link is in the description. I invite you to check it out. It's on my website. Can't wait to hear about it.